Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Hogwarts Legacy, the new Harry Potter on PC. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have a, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divided by two, so for me it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're gonna make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so we're going to start with window mode, go with window full screen. You just have two options over there. Make sure that you have the proper monitor. You have a lot of upscale type that you can choose. The, fair, the best one is the DLSS. So if you can use DLSS because you have an RTX card, go for it. After that, I recommend to go with FSR2. Uh, not a huge fan of the implementation of Intel or even FSR1 and don't use NIS. You can use it, but like this is pretty much a last resort if you really, really need FPS. If you don't use upscale technique, I recommend to go with TAA at low. Um, it will be a little bit because TAI in this game is crazy. It's very blurry and you're losing a lot of FPS. So go with low for that. So I'm going to recommend DLSS here. If you using DLSS or FSR2, I recommend to go with quality. You can expect a nice 15% boost in your FPS. Not a huge fan of balance performance and ultra performance. When you, you have too much movement in front of you, the game, the game looks a little bit blurry. So that's why I recommend to go with the DLSS at quality. After that, if you feel like that your game is a little bit blurry, you can add a little bit of sharpness. I like to play at 0.2, but it's question of preference and it doesn't uh, change your FPS. If you have uh, a 4090 or like the new generation of Nvidia, you can definitely use frame generation. It will help with your FPS. I recommend also to activate your reflex low latency if you have this technology. For the frame rate, I recommend to, it really depends like what is your goal. For me, I just look at 240 because of my monitor. But uh, if you're playing on a laptop with a 60 hertz screen and you have a lot of issue with your thermals, don't uncap your FPS, just, just lock it at like 60 or 75. You don't want to generate too much heat and after that stutter because of that. So just lock it with the amount of hertz of your monitor. Feel of view, you can go a little bit higher if you want. If you have a, a higher feel of view, you have to remember that you're going to lose some FPS. Motion blur, uh, removing it. I don't like this effect in any game. Same thing with depth of field. Better visibility when you remove those. Uh, chromatic aberration, I'm going with on. And I disable film grain. Again, question of visibility. I'm not a huge fan of film grain. After that, for the graphic option, first of all, effect quality. This one, if you put it at low, you will not necessarily see a big increase uh, when you just like walk uh, in the game. But when you're fighting, you see some explosion. If you're getting some crazy um, drop in your FPS, definitely lower your effect quality. I recommend to go something like medium. Uh, and if you're very limited with your resources, with your computer, go with low. Material quality, you can definitely start at medium, look at your FPS. You can even go at high, not a huge difference. Honestly, it's like 2% uh, difference in your FPS for each bracket. For quality, if you compare ultra to low, you can expect 12% boost in your FPS. So this one is pretty huge. Same thing with sky quality. It's not like a huge impact on your gameplay, honestly. Uh, go with low. If I compare ultra to low, you can expect 8% boost in your FPS.
For foliage quality, I recommend to go with medium. 1% different between low and medium, but medium versus high, 4%, another 3% when you go at ultra. So medium seems to be a good compromise. Post-process quality, I go with low. It will give you a nice 6% boost in your FPS and better visibility. Uh, but if you want like this cinematic and with all the post-processing effect, definitely you can go higher. But uh, yeah, it's a question of experience inside of the game. Shadow quality, this is pretty much the parameter that will provide you the most of FPS. If you compare ultra to low, you can expect 16% boost in your FPS. The game looks a little bit flat at low, honestly, so I recommend to go with medium for this one. Texture quality really depends on the amount of VRAM on your GPU. If you have 8 gig or more, go with ultra. 6 gig high, 4 gig medium, and less than 4 gig, go with low. View distance quality, huge impact on your FPS. Not a huge fan of low, you don't see very far in front of you, so I recommend to go with medium. After that, when you go high and ultra, you really need a good system, and, and if you're running the LSS, you should be fine. But if you're uh, limited with an old, like a 1050, 1050 Ti, go with medium. Population quality, I recommend to go with low. Uh, this will stabilize a lot your FPS. You will have a, a lot more FPS when you see a lot of like people in front of you. So... Again, if you're limited with your resources, go with low. It will help a lot. You can run benchmark if you want to like compare uh, the amount of FPS that you have. But honestly, I recommend to just play the game and look at your FPS to know uh, like, did you uh, obtain your goal or do you need more? Do you need less FPS? You can maybe put some uh, graphic parameter uh, a little bit higher to have a better experience. Question of preference. After that, all those ray tracing, I recommend for, for sure disable it. Uh, it will tank a lot your FPS. If you have a good implementation of your DLSS, you're running like a 1070, 1080. Uh, definitely look at ray tracing with DLSS. It can be fine. Uh, for sure, you're not going to do a crazy amount of FPS if you want to play high refresh rate. But if your goal is to have like a very good graphic and lock your FPS at 60, you will you can do it. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my guide. If you have any question, just come in in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.